I am really fighting the urge to number it. I wanna I wanna call it EL1. EL1. Just maybe sort of scribble it there. I tell you it also feels weird, the fact there's no emergency test switch. Because, you know, in theory you don't need one. It's, it's not that sort of emergency light. It's not to get you out of the property, it's just convenience. It's just so you can turn the brake back on again. So there's no test key switch for it. You, you know, I mean, if you want to test it, just turn the breaker off. Should do it. Boys and girls, girls and boys, back on this job, little bits, dotting I's, crossing T's, few uh, test results I need to get hold of. They've got a toilet in now, this is the last thing, the door's in, this has all been built, toilet's in, last thing to be done. Got a fan to go in there, got a light, pull cool, fan isolator, a few results on the board that I need to get. I've got outside light that needs to go in, I've just picked that up. What else needs to be done? There's a junction box I need to do underneath this kickboard I ran a six mil cable for the oven oh, not quite long enough so I don't like having to do it but I'm gonna have to extend it it's gonna be accessible being the kickboard but I'm gonna to talk to you about this because I find this is this is a little bit of a grey area a lot of people overlook and I think you're gonna find it quite interesting that's a 32 amp junction box how many of you guys have put a 30 amp junction box on a 32 amp circuit Little I'm taking this out so I've removed this drawer that drawer has gone now I've, I've seen it in the past, and I'll be honest, I think I've been the cause of it once. I've pulled this out, and as you pull it out, you, you just you scratch the top of the drawer. And every time that drawer comes out, you're gonna, you're gonna see a couple of black lines on it. So take the drawer out first. Anything below, even a door, remove it before you remove the oven. These things weigh a ton, so the last thing you wanna do is damage anything below it. They're not cheap, people, <laughs> unfortunately. I've realized that if you wanna replace the door, it's, a, it's not like a couple of quid. I know a lot of sparks that will test an oven at the isolator because it is just way too much hassle pulling an oven out it's normally grimy full of crap you know there's not enough room in the kitchen to sit it down on the floor and they just won't pull the oven out and you know because of that obviously you haven't got a true value now those that do pull the oven out I normally see them again they'll test at the outlet plate they'll put their free pros in there, they'll get a reading and they'll mark it down on their certificate how many of you test the out casing this is the bit the customer's touching. And so I was always taught, this is where you get your earth from. This is the bit that's, you know, when the shit hits the fan, that's the bit that's important. So I was always taught to test that. Whether it's right or wrong, I don't know, but in my head, it, common sense tells me, this is the bit they're gonna be touching, this is the bit that matters. So I always get my highest value and I, you know, I take it from here. Next job is to put this fan in. Now I've made a mark on the wall, I know roughly where he needs to go, but he's a messy job. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a pilot hole from inside out this way. Then I'm gonna get the core drill and I'm gonna drill it from the outside in. So any mess stays outside. Now, before I do my pilot hole, the most important thing is I'm gonna make sure there's nothing on the other side of this wall that I could go into. I don't wanna go into like a soil pipe or something like that. So I'm gonna take a measurement, go outside, just have a quick butcher, make sure I'm not gonna go into anything. Then I'll come in here with a hoover and a long drill bit and I'll drill a pilot hole through. A bit of a reference. Can you see my dot there? Now if you follow him up, he's roughly in the center of this window. So I'm gonna go outside, I'm gonna look below the window, I'm gonna see roughly where my hole's gonna come out. Okay, so there's the center of the window. Follow him down. It's gonna be around about here somewhere. Now there's a few pipes there, so I was quite lucky. I shouldn't be anywhere near them. I should be somewhere sort of around this area. There you go, it wasn't a bad guess, was it? Okay, so I've drilled my hole. Now, the last thing I want, when I'm coring from the outside in, I don't want this house to be full of dust. So I'm going to get my makeshift plaster here, and I'm going to stick him over my hole. Moment of truth. Is there any damage? 
Da, da, da. Hmm. Not too shabby. What's happened here? It's like it's just taken the paper off the wall, that's all. Not too bad at all. So, I'm going to have to chase my fan isolator. Well, I need to chase my fan cable over to there. I need to see where the hole is in the back on the, the back of the fan. But uh, that's my hole, so that hasn't worked out too bad actually. This is my little box of tricks. The customer got most of this. So, he's, he's got a Manrose fan. He's got the duct tin, he has got a grill, he's gone for a brown gravity grill. So that'll close when the uh, when the fans are not on. Um, he's got a pull cord. Um, personally, I'd have probably just gone for a light switch in the cupboard, but he, he wanted the pull cord, so he got a pull cord in the cupboard. Um, oh, it's got a little chrome, little chrome doodar in there. Look at that. See, I'm never quite sure what height to do it at. I always get a little bit, because once you've cut the string, it's a little bit too late to go back, isn't it? So. What I might do is I'll just, I'll just put the string in and I'll let him cut it and put that chrome bit on. Oh, okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to push him out like that. I'm going to get him flush. Now I'm going to go around the other side, I'm going to get permanent marker and where it protrudes I'm going to draw a line and then cut it with a wood saw. show you this. Now I, I don't like having to do a junction box if I can help it but I'm sort of like between a rock and a hard place here. I'm putting up one light, there's not enough room in there, there's not enough room in there and so I've got to do some connections here. So what we have is when I when I wired this, I this comes off of the new kitchen lighting circuit. Now he had to go live, That's obviously they needed to work in there, they needed to do cooking and what lots, that, that had to be live. Now the fuse board is down there. So I ran a feed up, I left the loop long enough in here to do this light eventually and then I continued it into the kitchen and I didn't want to put any, I didn't want to cut it and you know put waggos in the back of boxes and things like that purely because you know like when the plasterer comes along and things I just, I just don't want any risks that anyone's going to get hurt so I just left the loop unbroken, curled up in this hole so I could pull it out and eventually just give it a snip and that's what I've done so I've got my, two, my feed in my feed out, my, my supplies are there I've got my triple down to my fan, it goes down to my fan isolator and then off to the fan which is just there and then uh, you know, finally I've got this and I've got my switch line so obviously you can see I've, I've, I've brown sleeved one of these actually I've brown sleeved two of them because one's for the fan but I've brown sleeved them and you know perm, permanent light goes over there then it comes back again down here off to the light and bish bash bosh I'll be able to see what I'm doing in a minute so there we go there's my wago box all my wagos are in there I've labelled it so anyone that pulls out the ceiling, it's fucking fairly obvious what it does, but you know, I like to write on them. And I've put a uh, I've put a cable tie for it, it's just so you you know you need a tool to get into the box. Alright, so let me chuck them up, I'll get the lights on. Now I've got some spare bulbs from another job I was on. Sometimes when you buy lamps they come a bit cheap if you buy them in a pack of ten or a pack of five and you don't always use them all up, so I've got a few random bulbs, so what I've Preferably one is I would like to does it say Tesco. Fucking no, I don't think that's one of mine. Um, no, it's 27. That's, that's gonna be really yellow. I'd like a white one if I've got one. Oh my god, da, 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 da. four. Mm -hmm. I, uh, do you know what, guys? I'll tell you what, you can see this. That bulb there is the fucking bee's knees, okay? Now, you don't get that in many places, but if you look at the art, that is. Fucking the best bulb I've ever used. I would like to. I might actually get a few of these as van stock. Someone that I know who knows his shit recommended these, and I went on a job which was like an impossible job, and these got me out of a lot of trouble. So I'll tell you what, right? I fucking highly recommend those bulbs. And you know what? I think I'm gonna have to lap. <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to probably go for that 4,000. Fuck it, let's just go for the four. The four will do. I don't know if you can see, but I've got a uh, bit of a watery eye there, and it's a bit of an irritant as well to my blink. Now, that wasn't because I was drilling a hole without my goggles on, that was stupid. I was just looking in a downlight hole, trying to fish a wire across, and something's gone in my eye. So I'm going to try and, probably going to try and wash it out of that tap there. Worst case scenario, I'll use an eye wash in the van, but I'll try, and, I'll try to avoid 
before I do this little chat. I was always taught if you've got a first aid kit in your van, try and avoid using it unless you really have to. And the reason I was told that is because I leave mine in the polythene packet. And as long as it's in the polythene packet, I always know it's full up. Because the second it's not in that polythene packet, and I need it, and I look in there and I find the apprentice has used I don't know, all the bandages, <laughs> you're screwed. So I try to avoid it if I can. So I'm going to try and use the tap to just wash this out my eye. But worst case scenario, I'll go to the van and I'll get an eye wash out. But worst case scenario. Please know my eye is better now. Look. No, uh, no twitching, so that was that was quite fortunate actually. Yeah, it was, you know, it's horrible. When you see other people with stuff in their eyes, you're like, you know, man up mate. It's just got something in your eye, blink a few times, you'll be fine. Get something in your own eye and you're just like, you know, can someone stop the world because I wanna get off. It's, you, you can't think and you're just like, come on, just give me a five minute break and then we'll get back on this again, it's, it's horrible. But um, yeah, I managed to get rid of it luckily. So uh, I'm going to show you how this found in here. Looks like the builder's done this for me. Um, yeah, cheers Liam. So I'm guessing that's me. What's that? That's, that's, it must be a screwdriver and plug socket. It's, it's got my bald head. And uh, that must be my tripod. So yeah, yeah cheers mate. <laughs> Ta-da! One light, one fan as you can hear is come on. One isolator. Turn it off. On. It's on a timer, so you know, give it a, a poo. Turn the light off, timer stays on. Bish bash bosh. Um, tell you what, though, uh, guessing they're going to plaster this, and he's on. I haven't put the poppers in for obvious reasons, but it's a bit of a grey area in the old electrical industry, isn't it? What to do now? He did give me a chrome doodah for this. I'm not going to stick it on because the chances are if they are plastering this wall, this is going to get caked in crap. So let's put that one on. We'll leave him there. Uh, you know, in a perfect world, they should try and cover that. Doesn't matter if he gets dirty because they can change it. Okay, next thing on the list is to put this light up there where that wire's sticking out. And he is, if you're interested. Goodness, I've never put one of these ones up before. Oh, similar ones, just not this model. Was he? He is a. How do you pronounce that? Shayibik? God knows. Alright, where's that anyway? Yeah, I, you'd think it was a posi too, but I actually I can't get that in there. So we use a flathead. I think. There we go, he's undone. Let's try not to lose those screws. Beautiful. And what's this look like? Oh, it's quite cute actually, isn't he? Doesn't look too bad. Ah, I see, so that, obviously that comes out where the eyelid is. That makes a lot of sense. No earth terminal. And there's a little washer, not a washer, there's a grommet there. Cool, alright, let's chuck him up. Okay, so I've just connected the live and neutral back up in this switch. You'll probably remember from another video, I disconnected it just in case it did rain and the cables outside got wet. I didn't want it to trip off the RCD in the cupboard. Now, there we go. Doesn't look too shabby, does he? Doesn't look too bad at all. Now, if you're wondering why the cover's off, that is so I can test him. I need to get my loop impedance before I put the cover on. You see, the great thing about video and all my work is I don't have to write, my, <laughs> I don't have to write all my results down because I can just watch these videos back later on. So there you go, there's the outside lights, loop impedance reading. Not too shabby. Sort of goes with the gutter in really, doesn't it? All the pipe work around the outside of the house. Okay, I am 90% done now. I've got to put this, how did they get that off? So I've not taken the caps out. But anyway, uh, this has been moved now that this has gone in. Someone, I, I put this light switch in, it was just behind this post, I believe, and it's, it's been moved. So I'm gonna put him back, and there's a, I think that was a trunk in I had it coming down in. I'll put that back on. I'm going to test a few more circuits in this board. I've got some stickers that go on there. It's all pretty much labelled and everything's on now. Um, here's a lighter stuck in the cupboard actually. It's a, I don't know if you guys did this, but it's actually an emergency light. So, lo and behold, the power trips, which is you know feeding this room out here in the hallway, you know that should come on. So they can still see what they're doing when they're resetting breakers in in the consumer unit. Just getting a few continuity readings. 
One of the great things about putting in a emergency light fitting is you've still got light in the cupboard as you're doing all your bed tests. These are my old stickers. I, I used to print them myself and uh, you can see my, my printer's on the way out now. So I'm actually going to get someone else to print them for me. I'm going to probably actually, I'm going to re-jazz them a little bit as well. I, I might move them around, move, move, because I make all my own stuff on Photoshop. I might move this all around. Now I've, I've been advised on social media that this is too small. Um, I, I think I went by an old sticker and I just copied the size. Now this fair enough. I mean, I don't mind trying to make it a bit bigger. I cannot find the size on here. What is the size? I mean, is it this big? Is it as big as the page? Surely it's not as big as the page because, I mean, you would never get it on a, a four-way consumer unit. Um, I, I can't find it, guys. Just you know, I've asked the question on a uh, social media as well. What what is the point size? What is the PT size? I need to do my font at because I cannot find it. I'm probably being an absolute twat and it's staring me in the face. So the reason I I done this originally was when you do get stickers with the consumer unit. They're all different shapes and sizes. They, you know, don't match. They look ugly, and they don't always fit on the board that it comes with. Especially if you've got like a little four-way, five-way consumer unit, might be like half the size of this. You could never get all those stickers on there. So my idea was, if I can sort of get like a generic size, find a size that works for myself, I can probably get, you know, kill two birds with one stone, get all the all the information I need to have in one spot. And it, it you know, it, it served me well for quite a while. I mean, as you can see, I've got plenty of room on here. If it was a smaller board, you know, if it was about that big, I'd put one above the other. Yeah, they're always going to be this height, so it, you could always get one above the other, one on the outside of the cover, one on the inside. It, it seemed to work quite well. The only sticker, the, obviously, there's no change of colours on this. Um, that might be one sticker. Sometimes I'd have to stick on. Sometimes I'd chuck it on the Henley block or something if there's some new meter towels coming in. Um, but apart from that, yeah, it worked, worked quite well, guys.